Welcome to yet another Rivet tutorial or Rivet Solutions Showcase. Today I will show you how to automate Stable Diffusion using Stable Diffusion Web UI. We can probably also do this with other tools, so if you're interested in that, just tell me about it and I will take a look into it. The only important thing is that this tool needs some API we can use to you know, start jobs or do something with it. So basically what we are going to build today is a small pipeline where we first um, have some prompt uh, improvement. That's why we're using ChatGPT. And after that, we will generate an image. But the possibilities with this API are actually much bigger. We could build a even uh, involved um, GPT-4 vision and check, for example, if we generate humans, we could have GPT-4 vision check if the uh, anatomy is fine. If not, we could do like a recreation of images or we could use GPT-4 vision to select the best image from a batch of images. Or we can also, yeah, there's uh, other things like uh, we could, um, yeah, also, of course, upscale the image and all those things. But we will keep it simple so that you will have a good starting point and you understand what's going on. Um, Prerequisite for this, of course, that you have Stable Diffusion Web UI installed. Um, there is installation instructions here for all the systems, but they might not be so intuitive for Windows and Linux and uh, Apple. Um, so I will also link you to the videos below, one for Windows and one for Mac OS, and you can find much more on the internet. So I will not cover this because this is a well-covered topic how to use and get those tools running. And you will not only need to install the tool, but also a model you would use to generate images with. So that you have something like here uh, selected and you can actually do something. But this is all will be covered in those videos. So assuming you did all that, then you would as usual start up um, Stable Diffusion by going uh, having a terminal or command line open and being in the folder of it. And then I think in Windows, it would be like just web UI or web UI .bat, one of the both to start it. And on Apple, it's like this. And now what we need to do to get the API going is we need to add this small uh, API command here. And basically that's all we do. So we will just start it up now. And as we can see, it's loading. And there it is. And yeah, as I said previously, you need to have a, um, some checkpoint in here, whatever you like to use. Um, and if you are trying it out here, like pressing, like inserting something and pressing generate, uh, there should be an image coming after a while. That is the prerequisite. And now there is also this API link down here. Let's open that. And yeah, this is a dynamic API documentation. And to be able to know if the API is working, it's not enough to see that this is here because some of those functions are always available. It's important that we go a bit down and we can see those SD API things here, like text to image. Those are the functions that are activated if we use the, the API command at the startup. So you need to see those. <clears throat> and if you do, then the API is ready to go. You can also use this uh, for few, if you want to do your own things in the future for reference. So you can see what are all the input parameters for the text to image function and also for all the other functions like image to image <clears throat> and so on. So basically, this is like a documentation you can use if you want to uh, yeah, build other more complex processes. So like there's upscalers down here and stuff like that. Okay, but let's go to Rivet, enough of the preparation. So we are in my our local image generation um, project here and I have also have uh, the instructions here that you need to install the links and how to spoot it up and check it. So this should all be working. And now before we have lots of talk, let's just jump straight into it and try it out. So let's run this graph and let's... Uh... Okay, so let's run this. Um, let's say we want... Uh, yeah, we want a picture of a golden retriever walking through the streets of Tokyo. Let's submit it. First thing we are doing, we are um, creating an optimized prompt, or at least I'm trying to. So basically, I have um, OpenAI answer, and we are getting a positive prompt, which looks a bit more like the typical prompts you do for stable diffusion image generations. We have stuff like 35 film millimeter film photography aesthetic in there and stuff like that without me having to add that, then we have negative prompts, not blurry, 
not oversaturated, not underexposed. And we also make the AI choose the width and the height of the image so that it can decide if it should be in landscape or in portrait mode or in a one-to-one -one ratio. And so now we need to wait. I mean, my, my PC is not really made for this, especially now also um, capturing a video. This is really slow, but here we are. That's a picture uh, of a street standing in the streets of Tokyo. I think that's not too bad, to be honest. So let's have a short look how this works. Um, basically, first of all, we need one input here. And that is we need to define where our images for stable diffusion are being generated. So um, this is just our outputs folder in the stable diffusion and then the text image. So we need to adjust this so that it is your folder. So in Windows, those paths usually look a bit different, probably starting with something like C double point or something. Um, but we need the full path here without the trailing slash at the end, that's important. And um, so that we can later find the images when they have been generated. And then this prompt optimizer is actually fairly simple. Uh, we give the AI, we are creating a system prompt um, consisting out of three parts. First, our um, general instructions to a professional prompt designer to generate images, be creative, um, and so on. One special thing is we are using the JSON mode, so we are asking it to only output JSON. And we are also giving an example how the output should look. So we can see that we want the positive prompt as a key, a negative prompt as a key, width and height as a key, and then we give it some prompt examples. I just copied from the internet from some websites which are hopefully giving good results so that ChatGPT has some idea how to fill those um, things. Of course, this you should um, add your own uh, good ex working examples in here for your use case if you want to get uh, the results uh, to your liking. And this is all just I mean, just a bit prototypical to show what's possible. But basically, we turn cute golden retriever walking through the streets uh, in the end into um, a positive prompt for this. As we can see, golden retriever, adorable, happy expression, walking, lash and mouth, and so on. A leash and mouth, negative prompts, width and height. Pretty simple, actually. And now we are going to the stable diffusion graph. And here we have those inputs. So we have, uh, we have um, our um, prompt, our negative prompt, our stable diffusion path. So that's, as I said, is important, our width and our height. And then what we are doing with it is pretty simple. We are creating an object for the stable diffusion API. And in the documentation I listed below here, we are actually saw that we can use all those parameters here for SDAPI version one text to image. So I picked the ones that I deemed useful. So I do not want to use everything. It's too complicated. So let's take a small, a small look here. So we have the prompt we are adding, the negative prompt. We are adding a seed minus one, which means the seed is random, batch size one, only one image. And I'm using some um, turbo model from Stable Diffusion. So I only need seven steps. And I also, with this model, I need to keep the CFG scale down, but that is Depending on the model, you might need to want to test those parameters out in the front end of stable diffusion, and then add the working values here. Uh, they differ really strongly per model. And then we are defining the width dynamically and the height. And very important, so that we can properly access the images, we are going to save it. Because the API does return the image directly as well can see it's returning some huge object here, but I did not find a way to directly um, get that into the image node in uh, working into the image node in Rivet because it's base64 um, encoded and this image node wants binary. I had some issues with that. So what we are doing now instead, and it's a bit complex, but so I will not go through it. Um, we can get um, um, we are getting some information about the, some output about the information about the uh, things that were generated. And we can find some things here we need to, to find the file name, like the seed, which is, in, uh, here, which is used in the file name. And we know when the job was executed, so we can find the proper folder, with the, which is named by year, date, and, and so on. Um, but there are still some small parts missing of the file name, which we need to automatically detect. So this is all... Yeah, lots of stuff here to just in the end, first of all, get our final uh, folder path with a year, month, and date. 
and then reading the directory and filtering out all files that are, um, start, that are having this in here. And this part here is dynamic, this can change. So if you do multiple generations, this is actually being counted up. Um, and I don't want to keep track of that. But yeah, in the end, we can find this. And then we are reading it in the file and then we are getting this here. But basically, to be honest, you can just ignore this. It's working. <laughs> just put it through here. We could even yeah put it to a subgraph to make it a bit cleaner. And then we are getting our image here. So um, if you want to do changes to this, basically, you should only need to change this. So you can add other parameters here you can change the values of the parameters like um, yeah um, like having more steps if your model um, needs this and so on and yeah this is just a super small idea how to use this um, as I said at the beginning the use cases are far bigger you can um, uh, yeah as I said even even use try to use GPT for vision just be uh, yeah, a reminder, the cost for GPT-4 Vision is very high, so I'm not sure if you want to use that. Um, yeah, but basically it works. Let me just show you one more example before we uh, cut off the video. So let's say a middle-aged woman on Times Square uh, Cyberpunk. Let's do some random stuff here. Um, and yeah, while this is generating... Um, if you want to see other tools, um, as I said in the beginning, please let me know. Um, I will also link you the GitHub link to my repository for all the tutorials um, below. So there you'll find this file here that you can use and execute to, to run this and have a starting point for your own projects. And um, as always, yeah, leave a like and a subscribe that is helping my channel or also comments are really good. And yeah, that's basically it. So let's just wait some more seconds to see our last picture here and where are we going ah there we are so now we have our middle-aged woman on Times Square you can see my images I mean I added cyberpunk so this is again like a same stylish image but it might also be my model so um, that they always all look a bit of the same okay but that's it for today see you in the next video